All right, welcome to lecture six, part B, um, the second and last part of uh, our sixth lecture. So this one, again, we're actually going to go way back in time. We're going to talk more about sig figs again. Yeah, I know. So um, there's one thing I didn't mention earlier, and I really wanted you to get a, a chance to like really use them and practice them before we kind of got into it, which is you might remember we talked about when you do some math, you got a round, and if the math involves multiplying and dividing the way you decide how many digits you're going to put in your answer. You look at the numbers you're using and you find the number with the least amount of sig figs that you used in the calculation. You'll round to the same number of sig figs in your answer. We also talked about how if you are adding and subtracting, you need to round those numbers too, but there's a different rule. You look at the numbers you use in the calculation, you find the number with the least amount of decimal places, and you're gonna round to the same amount of decimal places in your answer. So multiplying and dividing, it's sig figs you go by. Adding and subtracting, you go by decimal places. So the question becomes, well, if I'm doing both at the same time, which one do I do? Do I go by sig figs? Do I go by decimal places? So which rule will I follow? Well, actually, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So if you're doing adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing in the same question, when you decide how to round, this is the way you're going to do it. So if you're multiplying and dividing and adding and subtracting in the same problem, this is what we're going to do. Now, let me read it to you, and then I'm going to do an example, and it might make more sense. All right. The rule says when you are doing both at the same time, mark the digits you should be keeping while doing each step by underlining them. Round only at the end. What does that mean? All right. Let's do it. Let's do uh, an example. Let's say I wanted you to do this problem. 8.55, and then we're going to multiply by uh, this, 15.5 minus 6.89. Now, when we're doing all these complicated problems, there's a little way to know the order you do things, and that's PEMDAS, right? P-E-M-D-A-S. So this tells me that I always would do parenthesis, and then I'd move on to exponents like squared and cubed and stuff. And then multiply. And then I would divide. And then finally, I would add and subtract. So when you have a bunch of different math steps going on, this is the order you do them in. Parenthesis first, exponents, multiply, divide, add and subtract at the end. So when I look at the question I put up, the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to do the subtraction first. So if I was to go ahead and get out my calculator and go ahead and subtract, all right, let me go ahead and type it in and tell you what you get. Now, I did this earlier. So what you would get when you do the parenthesis first, P starts, so parenthesis first, when I do the part in parenthesis, I get 8.61. That's the answer to that subtraction. Now, what I would do it, beyond that to, to, to get my rounding correct is after I do each step, I'm going to write down the whole thing my calculator says. And that's every digit my calculator gave me, 8.61. But I'm going to mark what I would be keeping if I did decide to round at this very minute. All right? So when you're subtracting, if you were to round in this subtraction step, what would you go by? Sig figs or decimal places? You'd go by decimal places because you're subtracting. So this number has one decimal place. This number has two decimal places. So what I would do is I would mark where I would round. I'd underline the part I would keep. So you go by the least amount. So I would be keeping right now one decimal place. All right. These are the digits that I would write down if I asked you to round. You'd write down 8.6, wouldn't you? Now, what we're going to do, though, is in the next step, we're going to use the entire number the calculator gave me, 8.61. And, and we're supposed to multiply, right? We haven't done the first part yet. We haven't multiplied by 8.55. So I would get out my calculator, and I would type in, 8.55 times 8.6, not just 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6, 8.
the entire number from the first step, 8.61. And when you do that, this is what your calculator is going to say, 73.6155. All right. Now, what I would also do is now that I have that answer, I am ready to round it. So I am going to, when I consider how to round, first off, I'm going to consider what kind of math I'm doing. I am multiplying. So do you go by sig figs or decimal places now in this step, in the second part? Do you go by sig figs or decimal places? You go by sig figs. So I would look at the sig figs I am using. This number has three sig figs. And in the underlying part of what we just did, so just think about the underlying part from what we just did, there are two sig figs. So you'd only give me two in the answer. So in the a number from the first part of the math, just when you think about rounding, just think about the part you had underlined a minute ago. So three sig figs and 8.55, two sig figs and 8.6, you'd round this to two, you round it to 74. All right, I'm guessing you need to see another example or two for this to make sense. It's kind of confusing, isn't it? All right, so let's do another one. Let's do another one. All right, I'm gonna move to another page and we'll do one more. We'll do uh, maybe one or two more even. All right, let's go on to another page. Oh, how do we round when we're doing all this math at once? You keep track of your sig figs after each step, round at the end. All right, let's try another one. Okay, it's a little confusing, I know, I know. So let's try another one. All right, so let's say I wanted to do this problem. 45.8 divided by, let's do 3.2, and then I also need to subtract 12.3. All right, there's a decimal there, 12.3. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the math just the way we normally do it, right? So just like I mentioned a minute ago, we're following PEMDAS, right? And this time the math involves, there's nothing in parentheses, there's no exponents, there's mul no multiplying, but there is dividing. I see some dividing there. And then there's some subtracting. So I'm gonna divide first. So when I divide first, I would divide 45.8, divide by 3.2. Now let me go ahead and do it in my calculator. Let's go ahead and do the division. 45.8, I'm just getting out my calculator, I'm doing it right now. And then I divide by 3.2. My calculator says 14, oop, I should stay with my other color, sorry. I must change that. My calculator says 14.3125. So let's not even talk about the subtraction part yet. Let's just pretend this was all the problem was and I wanted to round. I would look at the numbers I'm given and since we're dividing, we're gonna go with sig figs three sig figs, two sig figs. When you're dividing, you go by the least amount of sig figs to be exact. So how would I round that correctly? Three sig figs and two sig figs, that answer should be rounded to 14. Now we're not going to round it. We're just gonna underline 14, the 14 part of the answer. Maybe I'll do it, I don't know, we'll do it in green. Okay, that's the 14 part. If we had rounded, that's what we'd be, have written down. Now, we're gonna keep on going with the math. Now, this is where people get confused or do the wrong thing. When we do the math step, we're not gonna just use the 14. We're gonna type into our calculator the entire number from the first answer, 14.3125. And we will subtract 12.3. So we're going to use that entire number from what we just did. And we'll subtract 12.3. So when I do that, the answer I come up with is I'm going to come up with uh, 2.0125. Now, when I did that, I got 2.0125. So I use the entire answer from the first step in the second half of this problem. Now, now I'm ready to 
round the second half of the problem. So we're subtracting. So what do we go by? Sig figs or decimal places? We go by decimal places because we're subtracting. So what that means is, let's look at the numbers I used and let's count decimal places. In the underlying part of what we had to do in the first part, there are zero decimal places. So only look at the underlying part. In the new number that we had to use for the second step, the 12.3, there is one decimal place. So how many decimal places would you give me in my answer? You go by the least amount, two. This should be, uh, I sh you should just round it to two. Zero decimal places is what I meant to say. So you'd round this answer to two. Oh my God, is this confusing? Yeah, kind of, isn't it? Let's try one more. Let's try one more. All right, so the key is use all the digits in the math, but only use the sig figs in the rounding, all right? So you use all the digits in the math, but you only use the sig figs in the rounding, all right? All right, let's do it. Let's do one. Okay, they, oops, sorry, there might have been a little hiccup in the video there because I um, my slides had a little issue, but I, I'm back. Everything's fine. Okay, so let's do one last one, last one. All right, one last one, one last one. Let's see if we can figure this out. All right, we're going to do uh, this math problem. 8.2, we're going to multiply times 4.256, and then we're going to do three minus 3.874. All right. Issue number one, you got to know what order to do the math in. 8.20 8, 8 times 4.256 minus 3.874. What do you do first? Multiply or subtract? I'm going to give you a little hint. I'm going to give you a little hint over here. What do you do first? Multiply or subtract? You multiply first, all right? So you should multiply first, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the first two numbers together. I get bust out my handy dandy calculator. I type it in. When I do that, let me tell you what you should be getting. 8.20 times 4.256. Your calculator will spit out this answer. And I'm going to write down every darn digit my calculator gives me. I hope your calculator is saying this too. All right, let me double check that. Uh, 8.2 times 4.265. Oh yeah, that's exactly what my calculator said. Good, good, good. I wrote down every darn digit on it. Now, let's talk about the rounding for this answer. If I was to round, where would I round? Let's underline that, the part. So uh, we're multiplying. So that means we go by sig figs, three sig figs. Oh, that trailing zero counts. Four sig figs. Oh, they all count. So I would round after the third sig fig. So I ain't gonna actually round, I'm just gonna underline what I would do. I'm gonna keep three digits. I don't know why I'm whispering, why not, I guess. It's top secret. We would keep only three sig figs. So I would keep uh, this right here. When I, up to the eight. Okay, now I'm gonna keep on going with the math. So now I still got to do this subtraction business equals. So then what I would do is I would go ahead and I'm going to use the, the whole number still on my calculator. So I'll just leave it in there and I'm going to subtract. I'm going to use the whole 34.899 tool. The whole thing is still in there and I'll subtract 8 point, I'm oh, sorry, 3.874. My calculator says this now. It says 31.02, there's a decimal there, apologies, that's a zero. Uh, I'm gonna rewrite it, too messy. I can't handle it, it's too messy. 31.0252, all right. So we're done with the math, but now we gotta think about the rounding part in this second step. You're subtracting, sig figs or decimal places decimal places. In our new number, maybe I'll start with that, there are three decimal places. In the underlying part of the first number, 
there is one decimal place. You're going to round that to one. What's the answer? It should be. Oh, let me get my colors. 31.0. All right, 31.0. All right, so it's a little confusing. You might need to like, uh, you know, the videos for this week aren't very long. So, you know, if you're like, I don't get it, you could watch this one again. But um, hopefully it makes at least a little sense. And again, we'll get some chance to practice this in our Zoom time, too. So if you're confused, we'll try uh, one or two there, too. All right. So with that, that's actually it for the videos for lecture six. Um, there's just A and B. And I will uh, post these and soon and you'll get to watch them soon. And hopefully if you're stuck, you can talk to me and answer questions. I know this class is a little confusing being online. Even if we were meeting in person, it'd be confusing, but online, maybe even a little bit more. So absolutely, I am here to help you. I am absolutely here. You call me anytime. I will answer the phone. Well, maybe I won't, but I'll get back to you. I mean, I do sleep and miss phone calls and stuff. And of course, you can come to my Zoom office hours and email me and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Hang in there. We are done with this lecture. I'll see you next time.